everyone. Welcome to episode 37 of the Arianets podcast. My name is Ariel and today it is Saturday, July 15th. And I know I missed an episode last week because really exciting things happened last weekend. And so today's episode is going to be quite long because I have a lot of things to update you all on because it's two weeks worth of knitting for me to share with you. And then because last weekend, the reason why I missed last weekend's episode is because I went to Denver, Colorado for the very first time. And I went to the Explorer Knits and Fibers summer market and it was absolutely amazing. And so I think pretty much the last half of this video will be talking about the the whole experience and definitely showing you all of the yarn that I bought. It is it is a lot of yarn. It's so exciting. I just can't wait to start casting on something. Surprisingly, I did not cast on anything with my new yarn yet. I tried to hold back because I did want to show you the yarn before I de-skein them. Uh, so yeah, I mean, honestly, if you're just here for the yarn haul, just like skip towards maybe the middle or end. I have no idea on the timing yet, but I also have a lot of updates for my works in progress and also new cast-ons from the last two weeks. So we are going to get started. So as always, I will start off with what I am wearing today. And this was a finished object from a few, few weeks ago, maybe a little more than a few weeks ago, but I am trying, I do like to wear, I like to wear my like finished objects on podcast and there was one week where I had like three new finished objects and so I'm just trying to like go through the list and make sure I wear the recent finished objects. So for today I am wearing the Luna T by CL.Knits. That's her name on Instagram and yeah this is the T. I've talked about it in previous episodes but since it's been a while I will just review those I guess the key details on this tee. So for the yarn, I used Woolberry Fiber Co. in the colorway Pig Patootie, and I used the Berry Merino base. And this was from the Caboose collection from Woolberry, and this was the yarn I decided to make a top for, for Flock, because uh, Woolberry had, well, she's going to have, I think, a photo op or something for everyone I think for everyone wearing Woolberry or whoever wants to, but also for like the Caboose collection. And so Pig Patootie was the colorway I decided to make a top to wear for Flock. And I'm so excited. It is coming up so fast. I just cannot wait. So this is the first showing of me wearing this tee. So yes, Pig Patootie, this is the Luna tee. And I will, oh, I made size one. I used US, US 6 size needles to make this. And final measurements, I got 28 inches in circumference. And so that gives me about two inches of negative ease. And it fits really nicely. I like how it fits. And so I'll stand up now so you can see it a little better. So that's how it looks. I will turn around really quick, really quickly so you can maybe see the back. Okay. Don't know how much of the back you were able to see, but it's really nice. There is some shaping, so there is a, an actual front and back for this tee. I like how this colorway worked up in this pattern, this design, and this like stitch. I think it's like a broken rib or garter rib stitch. And I really like how that looks. I think it came out really cute and exactly how I was hoping for it to. And so, yeah, it's going to be a really nice tee to wear and as always, I, or as of lately, I've been feeling like all of the teas that I've been making, I want to make a second version. And it seems like I'm following this trend of like, when I make a version that is a variegated color like this one, I want to make a solid color. And also like if I make a solid color, I want to make a variegated version. So it will be interesting. I, oh, the one note that I know I did talk about when the last time that this tea came up on my podcast was that I was a little confused about the instructions for the sleeve decreases. I did not do the decreases for the body, so I don't know if it had similar like confusion around, but if I do make this again, I think I will just keep the sleeves 
without the decreases next time. Like, I think it fits fine, but just to avoid maybe some confusion, next time I won't do the decreases. But I really like the fit. And other than that, I uh, followed the instructions for the T as written. And as far as sizing goes, I'm quite sure that my sizing, like I think my gauge was right on. So um, yeah, I just really like how it turned out and I think it's really cute. Okay, so moving on to, oh, I have one finished object to show you. And it's really funny because it's also a new cast on. I finished this in less than a week. Ooh, and it's so cute, but it is not uh, like a, it's not a summer knit. Okay, so a new cast on and a finished object I have to share with you is my big rib sweater. Here it is, it looks so happy. It is a, the big rib sweater is a pattern by Jessie Made Designs. And I've been wanting to make this since I saw the pattern, but I just didn't have the yarn in mind for it or in stash or that I thought. And then it occurred to me, the yarn that I used for this, I actually had plans to make like another project with, but then I really, really wanted to make this sweater and I looked at my stash and I was like, wait, I'm pretty sure that I can use this combination of yarns to make this sweater. And I love that it is so like, the colors are very like summery, but the sweater itself is not like summer wearable because it's just so, so fluffy and warm. But I think it's really cute and it'll be really cute to wear once it gets colder as well. The yarn I used, I think it turned out so cute. I used all Explore Knits yarn and I held three strands together to get this fabric. And so what I use, again, all Explore Knit. So I used one strand Denali Sock Base in the colorway Peaches and Cream, which was from last year's Ice Cream Social collection, like mini collection. And then I held two strands of Surrey together, but two different colors. So one is also Peaches and Cream, and the other is Dreamsicle. And the Peaches and Cream is a variegated color, and Dreamsicle was like the tonal color. And I think worked up together, it came out so cute and definitely like blended it all out color wise together. And so I just really like that. I think it works really well with this like huge, the big rib pattern, stitch pattern. And yeah, it's so cozy. It was, I was honestly kind of sweating when I was knitting this last week because it, again, it's just like, it's all, it's so fluffy and the gauge is quite big but it's not heavy, I think because, well, I, I think um, the yarn, well, I think you can get really different kinds of like fabric, either like really thick and dense or something super light and airy, depending on the yarn combinations that you use because the gauge is big. And so I think I did opt for something a little lighter, even though it is three strands held together. But look how cute those colors look together. I love how this came out and again yeah I like worked this up in less than a week and I'm really happy with it cannot wait to wear it I love how the back looks like this this part right here where the shoulder is I do like how that looks and I guess the front too like the front right here how that rib design kind of continues on so anyway this is my finished object within the past two weeks, and it's so cute. Very, very happy with it. I do find it very interesting that this yarn color is definitely like a peach, and depending on the lighting, sometimes it looks more pink and sometimes it looks more orange, and so I think that's really fun as well. Definitely a true peach, I guess. Pink and orange. So that's my big rib sweater. Guys, I have so much stuff on the side here that there's so much to share. I'm so excited. Okay. Oh, I forgot to say the sizing for the big rib sweater. So I made size extra small, which is the smallest size. 
and I used US 10 and US 8 needles to make it, and those were the recommended needle size. So yeah, okay, so that's it with the big rib sweater. Now moving on to my works in progress. So I will first, the first section of this will be updates on things that I have already shown in previous videos, but that I've been working on in the past two weeks, and then I'll end with my new cast-ons. Okay, so get ready for an update on my big cozy cardi. Okay, I'm trying to make, I'm trying to keep it a little organized here, so it might just take me a while to gather all the things, make sure the yarn doesn't get tangled, but I've made substantial progress on my Big Cozy Cardi, which is a pattern by Andrea Mary. if you haven't heard of it before. Okay, so before I show it, I finished knitting the body. I have seamed it together, and now I am working on the Surrey neck neckband. Actually, I forget what the pattern calls it, but it's a little scrunched on my needles right now, but I will hold it up. Ta-da! Okay, so yes, yeah, so the body, the full body here is finished knitting. I did not weave in my ends. Sorry, this yarn. I was like, what is that yarn? Okay, but yeah, I finished the body and then I seamed it together so that there are like the arm, the arm holes here. I did not knit the sleeves. I want to, since there's still a whole bunch more knitting left on this, I wanted to kind of leave the sleeves for the end because they will be, or the cuffs, I don't know. It'll be quite short, I think. So I wanna kind of leave that to the end so that I'm not stuck on the Surrey collar. Collar, I think that's what it, the pattern calls it. But yeah, so this is, this is what I have right now. And I, I think I've made also good progress on this Surrey collar. Let's hope that I can keep this momentum going for in the near future so that we can get this done. Uh, yes, I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to show how much. I think this is definitely, I mean, this might be three inches, maybe, of the collar. At this call, I did not realize how long you have to knit this. I think it might be, it is over 10 inches. Over 10 inches, I think it might be 30 at least for this size or maybe for all sizes I don't know I forget but there's a long way to go with this collar but I am enjoying it so far I totally forgot to put in my notes the color the colorway name for the collar because I've never talked about it before because I haven't gotten to it yet haven't used it yet but it is Oh, actually, I will put it in the description down below. I don't want to get it wrong. So, uh, but I am using I am using some Surrey yarn right now, and it's this really pretty, kind of like rose, dusty rose pink, and I think it goes really nicely with the Jinju colorway, which is what I used for the main body here, which is the Labian Ame color. I think it's going to be really cute. So again, very exciting. I was very into working on this when I was finished with the body. I blocked it, seamed it, cast on the collar, cast uh, or like picked up for the collar. That took me honestly, I think over an hour to cast on for the collar, partly because I kept making mistakes and miscounting and kind of getting the proportions wrong because I was too lazy to I never, you know when I pick up stitches for stuff, I never really, I don't count it out and then figure out like measure wise how much stitches I should pick up in between certain points. I just kind of like wing it and hope for the best. Like I know once I get halfway, if how off I am and anyway, I just kept screwing up and so next time I will know that, or you would know if you do make the big cozy cardi and you're going to pick up stitches and if you're like me and you never kind of like count out the stitches before you actually start picking up that maybe you should for this one because there are a bajillion stitches for this. So you definitely don't want to have to redo this pickup more than once. 
So, but anyway, that is the progress on my Big Cozy Cardi. I am very excited about it. We are getting closer and closer to the finish line on this. And I can't believe it. Like, I am making size one. I'm using US 3 needles for this, and it is just massive. And this is the smallest size. But it's going to be so cozy for when the weather gets cold and you have this nice, big, cozy cardi to just put on over anything. So excited, excited for the finished object of this, but I'm really happy that I finally got to the Surrey section. So it's been fun to knit with. It's interesting because I don't normally knit with a single strand of Surrey. It's usually two strands at a time. So this one, it's just interesting. It's just different. Okay. So that is progress on the Big Cozy Cardi. Next is another Surrey project. And this is the one I've been working on the past couple days. And so I've made progress here. Okay, this is the Telopia, Telopea by Marzena. And let me show you the front. Okay, so progress on this. I finished knitting both sleeves. So both sleeves are now done. I did do the I-cord neck. And so now I am just finishing the body. And honestly, I think that I should be able to finish this this weekend. So that is the plan. And I think I'm pretty close. It's supposed to be a cropped sweater, but I do want to make it a little longer. So at this point, I am just going to knit until I think I have enough yarn to cast off and I'm excited for this cast off because if you look at the pattern pictures the hem for this is like a little ruffle and I think it looks really cute it's honestly the detail it, it was that detail of the sweater that made me want to make this pattern and now that I have the sleeves done I can also show you the cuff on the sleeves because I also thought that that was a detail that I thought was really cute. So here's what the sleeves look like. So it is kind of like a twisted rib with some yarn overs to make kind of like those holes that you see. And so and it's also like kind of a puff sleeve here and so I think that's really cute. And again it was part of the details that made me want to knit this pattern. So yeah, very exciting that both sleeves are done. For this one, I am using two strands of Surrey held together. So it is a thick fabric. Uh, I, I am using Explorer Knits yarn. I feel like lately I have just been casting on everything with Explorer Knits yarn. And I am using their Surrey Alpaca Lace base. Again, two strands held together in the colorway Chinley. I love this colorway so much, and I think it's so cute in the Surrey. And, oh, I don't know if I said this. I am knitting size one, and I'm using US four needles to make this. So yeah, so as you can see with the body, like I, it's definitely at a crop length now. I'm going to keep going maybe for hopefully like an inch, at least an inch more. I have this much yarn left and right now I am pulling from both ends of this skein so we will see how much more I can get from this but very exciting and yeah unfortunately again the weather will probably not let me wear this any longer than a couple hours in the morning but Super excited to see how it works out. I think it'll be nice and cozy and oversized. The body is quite, I think my gauge might be a tad big, if anything. I thought I hit it right on, but it might be a little big. So the body is going to be a little big, but again, we'll see how it looks on because an oversized Surrey sweater also sounds really nice. So yeah, so that is this sweater. And, okay, so I'll put this down. Oh, I will say one note that I have kind of thought about while knitting this. I do think gauge-wise, I would be interested in knitting this again, but with one strand of Surrey, because that would be interesting. The pattern originally was made 
or recommends two strands of mohair. And I think mohair in general might be like a little thinner than Surrey. I think Surrey is just fluffier. So when you hold it together and knit it together, it just is a little more dense. So yeah, I would be interested in making this with one strand and see how that looks because it might be a bit more flowy. Uh, and maybe I'll, I will get closer to gauge with that. But I think this is still going to be or fit fine. Okay, next up. Oh, I guess I can talk about this one. Oh, okay. I guess it doesn't really matter the order. Okay, I did bring two projects with me on the plane and for my trip to Denver for the Explore Knits summer market. And so I do have updates on that. Well, I brought two projects and one was a new cast on, so I'll put that at the end because I said I would do new cast ons at the end. But okay, this first one, this one I did bring on the trip to work on. Really good plain knit because you don't have to think too hard and you don't have to read instructions. At least for me, I think this was a good plain knit, especially if you're at the beginning part and you don't have too much. Once you get a lot of this, I think it will be just a lot to bring on the plane, but I was still on my first skein, so I think we were good. Okay, this is my progress on my half and half triangles wrap by Pearl Soho. And I am using, sorry, I am holding it a bit weird. Let's hold it out like this. I am using Coast to Coast yarn, and this is the colorway Yucca Blossom in the Signature Sock Base. And it's coming out so cute and so fun. I love how this color looks in the garter stitch. And it's just been such a nice and relaxing knit to work on. And I am holding it like this because if you've looked at the pattern before, it is a, the colors are a triangle, even though the whole thing is a square. So there is like a slant that's going on here. So that's kind of where my stitch marker here is. So that's how I'm working this slant, I guess. And this part is just straight across like this. So we are getting lots of progress done. Oh, I didn't even like show, well, I guess I have stitch markers, progress, pro progress markers to show how much I did work in the past and for this video in the past two weeks. So my stitch markers here and I've, so I've worked, I've worked a good amount in the past two weeks. Sorry, I'm trying to move, like hold this up oh. and show. Yeah, I've worked this much across in the past two weeks. The rows are getting shorter. So that is a plus for the start of this wrap. Uh, yeah, so the rows are getting shorter. So it's going to be, it's going to feel less. I mean, I think you know what I mean. It'll feel less, like the rows will feel like they take, because they will take a short amount of time. They will feel like they start flying by, I think soon. But I am, I can show you how much of my first skin that I have. So I am close to being done with my first skin. So that's pretty exciting. I do have two skeins of each color. And so hopefully, I do think it's hard to for me to figure out how far along I am on this in regards to like, will this get me to halfway? I'm pretty sure it will, probably over halfway with this one color. So, oh hey, I just found, I thought I lost my, my darning needle. I thought I lost it because it, I thought it fell on the ground like a couple weeks ago and I couldn't find it. And I was in my bag this whole time. Okay, great. Put that there. Uh, yeah, so that is my half and half triangles wrap. I, again, I've been loving knitting on it because it is just garter stitch and it's a nice relaxing knit. And I cannot wait to get to the second color, although I am very much enjoying this first color. Yucca Blossom is so pretty. The speckles on it is gorgeous. And yeah, it's been a good, definitely a good plain knit and trip knit. 
Okay, next up, oh, I guess before I move on, sizing wise for the half and half triangles wrap, I am making size big. Oh, I thought for some reason, oh, in my head, and I told my friends I cast on 180 stitches, but in my notes I have 190 stitches. I cast on the amount of stitches that whichever is the size big, which is the smallest size in the pattern. But anyway, okay, yeah, and I'm using US 3 needles to make this. Okay, okay, next project is my, oh, okay, is my Moonset T. I've also made good progress on this. Let me hold it up. Here it is. Okay, I have actually finished the sleeves. I finished both sleeves. They are short sleeves. So I did finish both of these and that was really nice to get out of the way. So now all I have to do is work on the body. And where is my stitch marker here? Okay, I didn't really work that much of the body, but I did do both sleeves in the past two weeks. So my ice cream stitch marker here I mean, I really kind of, I could count how many rows that I maybe did. Five rows or five rounds of the body. But I think that's still good. I love how this yarn is coming or turning, turning up, coming, turning up, how it's coming out in this pattern. And I think it's going to be really, really cute and fun. So the yarn I'm using is Coast to Coast yarn in the signature sock base in the colorway Red Panda. Oh, an update. So I think last video I said I was going to try and get Red Panda again because the color combination of Red Panda from Coast to Coast and Chinli from Exploring Knits was just too good. And so I was going to try and get those again so I can make a project, but I was a little late to the the update, the Coast to Coast update, and so I did not get the Red Panda. And I thought it's probably best for me not to anyway, because I can just enjoy the colors. I have the colors. I just won't have them in projects together, but I do have these yarn colorways, and so I can just enjoy them on their own, even though a combination would be really pretty. But yeah, so, and Moonset Tea by Ozetta, I don't think I mentioned that yet, but I'm making size extra small and I'm using US 2 needles to make this. It's so cute. This might be the next one. I tend to, I have a lot of like works in progress, but I kind of tend to like really get attached to one or two uh, throughout the week. And so this might be the next one for me to kind of just like get a lot done on the body because this week I did feel like, yeah, let's get the sleeves done. So that was kind of a nice like burst of motivation to work on this, so yeah, so that's been going good. And oh, and just a note, I am alternating skeins for this. And ever again, ever since I learned how to do helical knitting in the round, alternating skeins does not really bother me anymore, which is great. Okay, so let's put this down. Okay, and then, all right, we're almost down the list. Okay, this is one that I have not touched in a while. Might have only shown it once before, but then I felt like knitting on it, and then I feel like I did get a lot done, and then I stopped. <laughs> but okay, so this is the OG top by Sari Nordland. It is bottom up and it is just all lace. This is I think the craziest or most lace pattern top that I have possibly ever knit. So this is the progress I have on it as of today. The yarn I am using is Sorella yarn in the silk sock base. This is the first time I am using this base so it's kind of just been an experience like I am trying to like it's just new for me and so I'm very excited to see how this turns out I have been very much liking like knitting with it like it feels nice to knit with and so I'm really excited to see like once I'm done with this like how it feels to wear but I think it'll be really nice the colorway is rose 
and it is turning out really nice. I like how the stitches are looking in it. And I like that initially I thought, I think in the skein the yarn looks a little shiny, but worked up it doesn't look too shiny. And I, I like that. Like I didn't really want something that looked really, really like shiny. So I do like that, guys. It is getting kind of hot in here. Really glad that like I didn't decide to wear a sweater. Um, okay, but yeah, so this is what I've worked on. And then this... Oops, sorry. This gold flower stitch marker here was where I ended last. And so in the past two weeks, this is how much I worked, which I think is pretty good considering like it's just all lace, especially the parts where you have like overlapping stitches or you have to do kind of like those cabled like stitches. It takes so long to do. Those rounds take so long to do. But this is what I have so far, and I think it's looking really great. Okay. And then we finally get to the section where I talk about my new cast-ons. So this first one, very exciting. I cast this on so that it could be another project for me to bring on my trip to, to Denver. And this was also a really nice project to work on because, well, first let me show it to you and tell you the project. Okay, here's what I have so far. It is a flat, straight panel. This is the beginning of a gown cardigan by Sumin On. On Instagram, uh, her name is Dal Baudre, and all of the spelling and names are going to be in the description down below. I have been wanting to make this cardigan since I saw the pattern release. All of the test knitters versions look so great and it looks like it's going to be a great cardigan, like something that's, again, like a staple piece. And it's a lot of knitting and it is a seamed pattern, but I think it'll totally be worth it. It looks so good. So I am, I started knitting it and the yarn I am using. And the reason why I def I for sure, like, I wanted to cast this on for, for my trip was because I wanted to use Explore Knits yarn for this. And the yarn I am using is, sorry, I blanked for a little bit. The yarn I'm using is Denali Sock in the colorway Drift. And this color is so pretty. Like, it is a, like, blue-purple and I don't know, it just looks really, really pretty. And I'm really excited to have an entire cardigan with this color. Okay, and then the reason why I felt like this was really good plain and trip knit is because it starts with the, so this is the back panel, and then you just work flat in pattern for a very long time. So, this is what we have right now. It is, by the way, it is curling in on the side, so that's why it's kind of looks like there's a shape, but it's just because it's curling in on the sides. So we're still going. I am I got to the part where I am working the actually, is this what is the stitch marker for? Ah, okay. This stitch marker is where I started for like the armholes or like the arm, yeah, the armholes where the armholes will be. So I'm continuing to knit. I still need to knit more for that before doing the shoulders. And then we're close to being done with the back panel, I think. And all of this was knit with one skein of yarn. And so yeah, this is all the yarn that I have left of the skein. I have not wound up my next skein. So after I got to this point, I just stopped and worked on some other projects, but this was honestly a great knit for the trip. So it was this, this knit and my half and half triangles wrap were the two projects that I brought on my trip. And I know it seems crazy because I was only there for two nights, like just the weekend, and I brought two projects to work on, but they were both they were both knit on. Honestly, it was definitely more this, and then it was just the plain back. The plain ride back is where I started knitting on my half and half triangles wrap. 
and then I I worked on it more this past week so but anyway these were my two two trip knits and then oh for the down cardigan I am knitting size one and I am using US 4 needles to knit it okay and then my last new cast on is okay I was this was I cast this on because I was considering bringing this on the trip I because I had no idea how much knitting I was going to do on the trip I wanted to bring something that was like a new cast on because then I would for sure have like a lot to work on so I thought about this but then I was like I want to go with something a little simpler potentially but still it still cast this on it's still something I want to make so we're all good there okay this is the beginning of my Juno top Juno top by Inez and on Instagram she goes by Vernit and I'm very excited about this I've been wanting to make this since I almost wanted to test knit this and then I decided not to I think just because I was kind of busy but I knew that I was going to knit this as soon as the pattern came out and so I am really happy to have started this the yarn I'm using is Explorer Knits in the Denali sock base in the colorway Thistle which is a gorgeous color I love the color on this and I think this with this stitch pattern it's going to look so pretty and yeah so I will just show the stitch pattern here it is very very cool it is once you see the video on how to do this stitch it's so easy and like easy to remember and so that's been really nice about this knit I am there's a lot of versions for this top and the version I am knitting is the strappy version so this version will have straps because the other versions don't have straps which I think in the future I might also want to make because it was the version that really drew me to this pattern in the first place it has like an off shoulder type of thing and I think it's really cute but at least for this first version I do want to make a strappy version because I know that that'll be a lot easier for me to wear on a kind of like regular basis and I am knitting size one and I'm using US 3 needles to knit this and yeah so we've got a couple inches it is worked bottom up and so that is what you are seeing here and I think it's going to be really really cute so Juno top that is my last uh, work in progress slash new cast on for me to talk about on this podcast episode lots of new things and honestly I was quite proud of myself for not casting on even more things because of all of the new yarn that I got last weekend but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna cast on some new things this coming week we will see but okay okay where do we even start? Okay, so now we are on the acquisition section of this video and I have so much to share because I also got some new packages in the mail. So as an overview, just in case you only wanna watch a certain section of the acquisitions, I have all of this stuff that I bought from the Explorinet Summer Market and I will also talk about that experience a little here. And then I got my Paisley Knits yarn. I got two orders. So one was the Summer Box because I have subscribed to Paisley Knits like mystery seasons box boxes for this year. So I have the Summer Box. I also got my yarn from the Gods of Olympus pre-order, which is also by Paisley Knits. And then I did get my Woolberry order from the I think this was like the um oh I always every time I talk about it I forget what it's called the rewind the Woolberry rewind so I got a couple skeins to also show you there and also some goodies so there will also be some non yarn things for me to share and all right so we'll just get into it I guess first 
I will start with the Explore Knit stuff because I know that that is probably what is going to be in the title of this video and maybe what you are all here to see. Uh, okay, first off, I so I went to the Explore Knits summer market in Denver, Colorado at her like Ali Ali's yarn studio, Ali and Team's yarn studio. And so that was really fun. I've never been to Colorado ever. And so this was like a new experience for me, a new state for me to have visited. And so that was also just going to be really exciting. And also, honestly, for me, a little made me a little nervous. I went with two friends who are as crazy as, about yarn as me. And so that was really fun. Uh, I have never traveled for a yarn thing before and so it was all just like new. I've also never traveled with these friends before but I had a feeling that we would be kind of have like similar travel vibes and like what we wanted to do and of course the yarn so I knew it was going to be good and it was amazing. Just the whole experience was so fun and amazing. I seriously can't stop thinking about it. I had such a great time. Uh, but I will like as as an introvert, a very introverted person and someone who just gets nervous about flying in general, like very like nervous, but super happy to have gone with friends who just made the whole experience like really fun. And like the plane ride there was felt really short. I think I'm usually not used to really short plane rides because Normally when I fly, and if you haven't known this already, I am originally from Hawaii, uh, the island the, the island of Oahu. That's where I grew up, and then I moved to the mainland for college. So anytime I flew, it was pretty much between Hawaii and either Oregon or Washington, which is where I went to school. And th that flight is anywhere from like five to six hours. And so whenever I fly, it's usually five to six hours. That's kind of just how plane travel for me is always like, is just how it was. And so when the flight is like two hours, it feels very short. And so it was nice that the plane ride was short. And also knitting on a plane, before knitting, I have no idea what the heck I would do on a plane. How can I survive on a plane? without knitting because knitting does make the time fly by a lot faster. So that was also really fun. Um, it was really funny because when we were, oh, also we ate dinner at the airport. We like sat in at one of the restaurants. So good. I have never sat in an airport, I think, and ate in a restaurant. Like I've taken out food before, but I haven't sat down and had like service kind of place at an airport so that was that was fun the food was great and then we went to our gate and I oh okay what was really funny was there were people we saw two people knitting at the gate and we we're like what are the chances that they're also going to the Explore Knit Summer Market turns out they weren't but because the two friends I went with are just so friendly like way more friendly than I am they we we're telling them about the summer market and she ended up going like one person ended up actually showing up to the summer market and it was really really cool and really fun and she was so nice and it's just so cool it's so cool and on the plane ride one of the flight attendants was very interested in actually and also some people sitting next to us they're very interested about us knitting because I guess it looks it looks interesting when there's a row of three people knitting and the flight attendant told us at one point she like counted how much people were knitting on the flight and there were eight people knitting uh so that was really cool I don't think we got to see or know who these eight people were but that's really fun I bet someone someone there had to have been at least one more person also going to the explore knit summer market right I don't know but so that was all fine very interestingly, okay, so again, I've never been to Colorado or Denver before. So, and then I didn't know that Denver has like one of the largest airports. So when we landed, I was not used to like the taxiing of the plane. 
being so long and like the plane actually moving for that entire time. It's usually like the plane sitting and just waiting for like the gate to open for them to go. But this time we were like going for like, I don't know, felt like maybe 10 minutes. I'm like, where are they going? This airport is huge. And then oddly, it's when we were getting off the plane, it started hailing, which was also interesting, very odd. Uh, but thankfully it stopped by the time we had to like go out and like get in the car. So anyway, so that was that. It was just, the whole experience was just very interesting. The airport is huge. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, now it's on to like the actual yarn stuff. Okay. We, okay, so the yarn, the summer market was on a Saturday and we woke up early on a Saturday, mostly because we were excited. Honestly, I couldn't really sleep on this trip. I think, I don't know if it was because, you know, it's usually hard for me to fall asleep on trips, but I also read that maybe altitude, like a change of altitude might also affect sleep for the first couple of days you're there. And we were only there for a couple of days, so didn't have enough time to get used to it, but it was very interesting. The altitude thing was what people were telling me about visiting there. They're like, drink lots of water and try and get a lot of sleep and don't drink too much alcohol. Uh, so. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, didn't really sleep, but also very excited, so that's probably could have been it. We got some coffee in the morning. The coffee shops that we went to in Denver, at least the area where we were staying, they were all so cute. Like, the whole area was so cute. The shops were cute. The coffee places were cute. The coffee was great. It was so good. And also things just looked and were seen, and they were just slightly cheaper than in Seattle. Like it, it was cheaper. That was quite nice. Uh, I think there's also less sales tax than in Seattle. So that was also nice. But okay, we got to when there was when it was time for us to show up to the Explore Knits place. Um, it's a really cute like little place. It was like lots of parking. I think it was kind of like there's just like other kind of like shops or like studios there. So it was really nice. They had tents up for us to sit under because there was a lot of sun. Uh, and they had like drinks and like cake and, and treats and donuts. And it was so cute. We were just sitting and talking and kind of like meeting with people. I got to meet, I got to meet people that I was friends with like on Instagram like I've talked to them on Instagram and so it was very cool to see them in person for the very first time uh I will say so I got to meet Coley of Paisley Knits uh I hope I didn't come off too like fangirly but that it was very cool to meet her in person she is so so nice and yeah it just oh my gosh that was so fun uh so yeah, so we were just like waiting outside. They had like tickets to pass out for kind of like, you know, for standing in line so that we didn't actually have to stand in line. And yeah, it was just a good time waiting outside for, for them to open. And then Allie and the whole team came out to just say hi and thank everyone for being there. And then they surprised Allie with a birthday cake because it was going to be her birthday couple days after the market and so that was really cute and also they did cut the cake for us to also eat and enjoy and the cake was very good um so yeah and then we were not the first ones to get in although I think we would have if if we were to like camp out but Allie did not want anyone to like be waiting that early uh before the market opens so so yeah but anyway we, but we were one of the first in the group to go inside and then it was just, I felt like my brain, I had my plan of yarns to buy all in my head and then once I got in, it kind of went, Phew. like I just went in and I was like, oh, that one, that one, that one. Oh, I need to make sure. I was like, how much of these? I don't know. Let me just, I'll figure it out later. And so we all kind of just went and just grabbed all the yarn because it was so pretty. It was so cute inside. The, the place and how they had the yarn all laid out and there were a couple rooms of stuff and uh, what else should I say? Okay, I guess this is the time where I 
actually show you some yarn because I think I've probably been talking for like, I don't know, some time without showing yarn, which is what we're all here for. So uh, let me, okay. I do not know in what order I'm going to do this. Oh, okay. But let me first, I will show you. I got all of my yarn to fit in this one bag. The, it was also, <laughs> this bag is so heavy. Um, this is one of the bags. It was a new bag uh, that she had at the summer market. And so I was able to fit all of my yarn in this one bag. So also all of the yarn fit in my carry-on. So I feel like I bought a lot of yarn, but it wasn't, I would say it wasn't that crazy. But let me hold this up again. Like everything fit in this, in, in this bag. This bag, it's a very nice bag. And it does hold a lot of stuff, so I'm very happy about this bag purchase as well. But now we are going to take out all the yarn. Okay, so I will start first with the one colorway that I told myself if I did not get this color, I would be very sad. And I got a lot of this color because it's so cute. Okay, so I will start first by showing, okay, maybe in the Denali sock base. Okay, so this is grapefruit. Grapefruit is the color that I really, really fell in love with when I was looking at all of the yarn that was going to be offered at the summer market. I really, really, really wanted grapefruit. I feel like it's just so, it's so cute. It's so bright and happy, and I just really like it. So grapefruit, I got two skeins in Denali sock planning on making some kind of tea. I think this would be so cute for a summer tank top. So I got two skeins of this. And then I got, well, they're also nicely packed in here that after this video, I'm gonna have to repack it. But okay, I also got one skein of grapefruit in the Rockies DK base because I want to make, I think this would be so cute as a Manhattan hat paired with paired with a Surrey like it's going to be so cute so I did get one skein of Rocky's DK to make that and of course with the Surrey I got I got five skeins of Surrey look how cute it is in the Surrey it's so cute so I am planning on making some kind of Surrey sweater with this and then I will probably have leftovers so that I can make I can use the leftovers to make the Manhattan hat with so got that on Surrey as well. And then how could I not, I when I was making my plans for this, I for some reason did not take into account boucle. But I felt like if I were to get a boucle, I had to get it in grapefruit. It's so cute. Okay, so I feel like I just, I have to do this, at least just, just for this color, because this color is so cute. This is all of the grapefruit color like how many bases I mean some were only one skein like the DK but I got one two three four I got it on four different bases here <laughs> because the grapefruit's so cute okay so that is that color and then the next color I know this is a color that everyone was wanting and they sold out in the Surrey there was one person who just pretty much bought up almost all of the Surrey in this color this is in my neon era. Uh, so I did not get any Surrey, but I got it in a couple bases. I got two skeins of in my neon era in Denali sock. Look how bright it is. It's so cute. This one's also very cute. Very excited. This is going to be a really cute tank top. I feel like all the bright colors would just be really cute summer tanks. And then I also got two skeins of it in the Rockies DK base. And I was actually planning on making this for a test knit that I applied for, but I didn't get into the test knit. So it's okay because I will just wait until the pattern comes out because I'm sure it'll come out maybe within a month or so, like while it's still summer and still warm enough to like wear tank tops. So these will just be on hold for that pattern to come out for me to make make it with this. I think it would be really cute. It's very bright, very pink. And then 
while we were we are on this kind of like the neon colors I did sorry for the crinkling I did have to get myself a mini skein set of all of the neons because it is just so I feel like I just could not leave without a mini set of the neons because I don't think I would get full skeins of the non-pink colors but I still wanted like I feel like for the experience like for the summer market it was the neons were like the thing I feel like and so I felt like I needed to go home with a neon mini set they're very cute all together okay now on to kind of different colors okay where do I start I will just grab something and then we'll we'll talk about it okay oh and overall with what I had planned to buy from the summer market I think I got everything that I wanted to get plus some more but everything I wanted to get I was able to get I think so it all worked out really well okay one of those things I think I did mention is this color so this I got in Denali this is the Denali sock base this is for Maggio and it's really cute very nice color very neutral color I do not know what kind of top I will make with this but for me I think it seems most most like tank tops or like short sleeve tops I can make with two skeins of fingering weight and so this will be I have some ideas but the, this will probably turn into a top, some kind of top. Very cute. I do like how it looks. Sometimes yarn looks different in person versus like online or in pictures. Just, you know, slightly, but I I felt like this could have been a color that maybe in person I didn't really like as much, but I actually liked it a lot more in person. So this is very cute. And then I got this one. I don't know if this was in my no no I think I did maybe on the day or the day before this ended up in my plans so I got two skeins Denali sock in barrel aged sour I heard people talking about this color a lot and oh yeah it is so pretty I really like the depth and colors in this yeah you can see it on camera which is really nice I am planning on making a color tip tee with this, but all just one color. I really like Emily Curtis's version of her color tip tee, but it was in just like a plain black color, lamp black from Granoui. Uh, and so I kind of feel like in a similar vibe, I wanted to go with a dark color for my next color tip tee. And so that is my plans for these two skeins. And then, let's see, I got, these are all basically just like two skeins for stuff now. It's kind of usually how, how it goes. Um, okay, next up is Sophia. I, so, my first ever order from Explore Knits was her Ireland collection in, was that last year? And I, I think the only colors I got was Fia, possibly. I remember though that I was trying to get Fia and I freaked out because when I checked out, I think forget what base it was. It might've been the Surrey base that it said they sold out. And I was like, what the heck? So I got, I got the, oh no, I got more colors, but Fia was like the one I wanted to get from that collection. And I was sad that I thought that I couldn't get the Surrey. So I got a sock set of Fia because I didn't know, well, I really wanted it on Surrey pretty much, but I got a sock set and then I went back on the website and I saw, I guess maybe they like, I don't know what happened, but they ended up getting more Surrey. And so I got a sweater quantities of Surrey. I made a cumulus T no cumulus blouse yeah cumulus blouse with that Surrey and then I've also used the sock set of Fia already and then I felt like I just needed more Fia uh, because I feel like Surrey when you get a colorway on Surrey 
it's different than if you get it on a different like non-fluffy base and so I wanted to get it again in a non-fluffy base and this time I got it in the cashmere cavern sock base I think it looks really pretty in this base the colors look so soft and I feel like it looks even more pink and I love all the pink in it it looks so cute and so soft and it is texturally also very soft because cashmere and so yeah I did get two skeins of Fia again two skeins of a fingering weight yarn usually gets me some kind of top so no concrete plans yet but will be a top probably and then okay I got two skeins Denali sock in the desert bloom colorway this is also really pretty and it's just gorgeous. There's so much colors in this and I love that it doesn't look, I don't know how you dye all of these colors together and it still looks, you know, like not muddy or like too like blended together. Like you can clearly see the different colors and I really, really like how that looks. So yeah, Desert Bloom, two skeins in the Denali sock. Again, will be some kind of top, uh, but I could not resist these colors as well. And then, okay, I got three skeins in the Rockies DK base in the colorway Canalasso. I might have said that wrong, but I love this colorway. When I saw this on Ali's Instagram, I was like, oh, I have to get this colorway. And so it looks so pretty. I mean, for obvious reasons, there's a lot of pink in here. And so that's why I really like it. But I, I again, I just love this colorway. And so I got three skins. I am planning on making the Soho top by Kadri. I believe that that's what it's called, like the tank top version. It's like a garter stitch tank top. I've made it before and I really like it and so I want to make it again and so I thought this would be a really cute, like a cute one to have in this colorway and I don't think I've used um, Explore Knit's Rocky's DK base before and so that'll be fun and I think it'll be, I think it'll be great. So I have this. I feel like I was going to say something else about this but it has slipped my mind but that's okay. All right. And then, oh, okay, I will show you. Okay, there was a room in there that had like extra, like extras, I think, from, I think from wholesale orders or like just some extras uh, yarn. And I was looking through it and I was being very good and not, I was resisting some really pretty colors and some that I already have. And I was like, no, I don't need that again, even though it's very cute. Okay, and then I was digging through and I found a sock set. There was, apparently there was only one sock set uh, and I found it and I was like, I guess I'm keeping it because it's really cute. It's so cute. Uh, this is the, Apricity and Liminal colorways from the Winter Solstice collection, I'm pretty sure. And it looks so pretty. Like I, so I did have, I did have this colorway because I got the, the box with, with one skein of each variegated colorway from this uh, collection. And so I have it, but for some reason, either it looks different or it's been so long since I've knit with it that like, it just, I don't know. I felt like I needed it again, I guess. But I never got the to any of the tonals. And so just having the mini tonal with this, I think together really was just like, it'd be really cute. So anyway, snagged this sock set. And then, okay, this next, this last six colors is because this was the same six color combination that was on um, the Explore Knits 
Instagram grid, like when they were posting what colors they were going to offer at the summer market, this was one of the posts. It might have been the first one. There were six colors and I was like, they look so good together that I want to make something with them together. So I got these all on the cashmere cavern sock base. I guess I'll just like, can I hold them up? Let me move my hair into the back. Um, let's see, does this work? So these are the six, six colors. I think they look really cute together. So I got one skein of each and I will, it's okay. So I usually have in the description below, like all the things I talk about, but there's so much yarn here that I won't be putting all of the yarn in the description. But if you have a question about what I am saying, do let me know in a comment and I will, I will share with you as best as I can. But I, so I will say each one of these colors here. So this is Daybreak, which is a really nice like red brown. And I like that a lot. Then Rose Quartz. These are all colors I have not, well, almost all colors I haven't gotten before. And so it's, it's very nice. So Rose Quartz. Um, there is, this is linen, and then, okay, see, I said almost all colors I didn't get before because one of these is Chinli. So now I have Chinli also in the cashmere base. But yeah, so this is Chinli. And then Alto Stratus and Trastevere. Really sorry if I said these wrong. Uh, so anyway, so these are, these are the six and I actually, oh, oh no, my tower of yarn has fallen. Okay. So I am actually planning on making the, it has, oh my gosh, what is the pattern name? I should have written it in my notes. It is, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to look this up. So sorry about that because I would also love to know maybe your ideas on color combinations because I want to make a shawl with all of these yarns, but the pattern uses five colors and I have six. And I basically could not in time figure out, or at the time could not figure out which five I wanted. So I got all six and decided that whichever color I don't put in the shawl, I can make like a crop tank with. Okay. So the shawl that I want to make, see, I knew the name of the shawl, like always, but when I'm under pressure, like when the camera's recording, this is why I need notes because my brain just like doesn't really work. Okay, the Vertices Unite Shawl by Stephen West. I think it'd be really cute to make in five of these colors. I just don't know which five. I think that I'm, I really wanted to use Daybreak, which is this brown, red brown. Really wanted to use it in this, but I couldn't figure out which color combination, like which, it's pretty much just which yarn to take out. Only one skein needs to get taken out. And I think possibly if I take out this, take out this brown, this is a cute, a cute color combination. It feels very like cool colors because, I mean, this brown is like really like warm, but what if I did these maybe? No, I don't know. Or switch out, like which blues? I don't know. Maybe what I should do is take pictures of different color combinations. I did ask my friends there like which color combos look nice. And so I did take pictures of a couple. So maybe I will do that and put an Instagram poll. I don't know. Are people into that? Or are those annoying to do or see on Instagram? Anyway, I have a lot of time, I think, to figure out, figure this out because I don't know when I will cast this on, but it is a plan to make the Vertices Unite Shawl. I've been wanting to make it for some time. And actually I have other yarn combinations that I want to make this shawl with too. So I might end up with multiple of this shawl as I 
I've been saying now for so many patterns this year. They're just so good. Okay. And then in the middle of talking about this, I realized that there are a couple things that I bought that I don't have with me right now because they are in my laundry basket because I was going to wash them. But I will talk about them and maybe bring them on or wear them in a future video. But so the other non-yarn things that I bought, and I'm hoping I'm not missing anything else, is I bought one of those ice dyed sweatshirts. When I saw Allie talk about her dyeing these ice dyed sweatshirts, even before I saw them, I knew I needed one. I knew it was going to be really cute. And then she like wore one and I, I knew I needed one. So I was able to get one and I really like how it looks. I wore it immediately. Like that night it was AC in the like hotel room place that we were staying at. And so it was perfect to wear. So I definitely wore that that night. It's very comfortable and it's so cute. It makes me really happy. So I did get one of those. So sorry I don't have it to share with you because there were all these different colors that she had and so it was really just kind of like picking which kind of like color you wanted. And they, again, they're all like different. So next time I will, I will show it or I'll wear it. Hopefully I'll remember, but I did get one. Oh, I do have a picture on my Instagram. It is in that picture. So if you're that curious about it, you can look on my Instagram. I also got one of the t-shirts, the Explorer Knits t-shirts. It was so cute. It was just so cute. So I got one of those as well. And let's see. Okay. So those are the two things that they're just in my laundry basket. I haven't done the laundry yet. It's usually during the weekend that I do laundry. So I haven't gotten to it yet this weekend, but those two things. And then, uh, as I've shown it before, I did get one of these tote bags. It's so cute. Explore with your knits. And the bag is very sturdy. And it's, I like that the, like the size of the bottom is wide so that it can like sit flat and it sits really nicely and it holds a lot of stuff. As you can see, or as you saw, it, ha it can hold all of the yarn that I bought so that's very nice and if you're wondering that was maybe a little over 30 skeins so this bag can hold like 30 skeins of yarn okay so got this bag and then oh I'm sweating now from moving all this stuff around okay um okay let me Sorry, just trying to clean up a little bit. Okay, I also got some coffee. I know, it's, I didn't need it, but I really wanted it. And the, it's, honestly, the packaging is just very cute. And the pink packaging was really cute. Honestly, well, anyway, I got this. I've tried it and it's so good. The coffee's so good. Um, I can smell it through the box since I've opened it. It smells so good. I love coffee, you guys. So I had to get that. Um, I also got stitch markers. They're so cute. Um, I, oh, there is one missing because I am already using one of them. But you can see the stitch markers here. I'll try to hide my face and see if it'll focus. There's a little fox here. It's so cute. Okay, I'm gonna sit here and talk about it until the camera focuses, hopefully. And if it doesn't, I think you'll be able to get, get an idea. But they're so cute, and so I felt like I had to get some stitch markers as well. And then, oh. I had to get a mug. I've been, I used to buy so much mugs. Like, I really, really, really like cute mugs, and then I've really tried to stop buying mugs. I feel like I've been good within the past couple years, but I had to feel like I really just had to get this mug. It is a good size, and it's so cute, and I really like this color. 
I think they also had a green colored one, but this one's definitely more like my, my vibe. And so, yeah, I have used it every single day to drink my coffee out of and tea since I got it. And so it's been really nice. I also very much appreciate like there's this like dent in here at the top and it's really nice to drink out of and the handle's nice and big and sturdy so it's so cute so yeah I had to get a mug and I think that is everything that I got from the Explore Knit Summer Market it was a lot but at the same time you know I if I was gonna fly all the way there I should make it worth it is my how I think about it. I'm very happy with all of my purchases and now that I've talked about it on here I feel like now I have permission to cast on something with the yarn. I just don't know what yet. Probably something with the grapefruit because I love that grapefruit colorway. Okay so we are now done with the Explore Knits yarn acquisitions. Moving on to my other acquisitions because there's still, there's still more. This video is gonna be so long. Oh, okay, I have this box here. Okay, starting off first with, I'll start off with the Paisley Knit Summer Box. Uh, the Summer Box is really cute because it also comes with some goodies. That's not yarn, not yarn goodies, but also with the yarn. So there is a print that it comes with. And so this is the one for summer. And I think it's very cute. Oops. So I'm gonna place this here. Oh, I am also sorry if, should I have put a spoiler warning or say a spoiler warning, just in case you, you have also ordered it and haven't received your box yet, but I will be showing now the summer box. <clears throat> Okay, it came with some tea. Uh, yeah, so this was, last time it came with two different flavored teas. This time it's the same flavor, but one has a decaf sticker. So maybe one is decaf and one is not. Don't know, but this was very good. So very happy about that. And then comes with a candle. And it's, I think it's the same brand as, as the last, the spring summer box, but it's a different, different scent. And so this one says clove, citrus, lavender, and balsam. And it's, it does, this one smells very good. I did smell it already. Guys, it's getting really sweaty. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, so, and again, so I did subscribe to all of the Seasons boxes, so there'll be four this year, and I, for all of them, I decided to get the sock sets because I feel like that was like a good way for me to get the variegated and tonals even though the tonos would be like the minis of the sock sets. Okay, so I did get the sock set box, and so there are four sock sets. So I will just be, let me hold them up first, and then I'll talk about, I'll say the colors. So, I don't know the best way to hold up. My hands are not big enough to hold up all. But look, they are so summery and bright and really happy and so they fit the theme really well and I'm very happy and excited about these yarns. So let's talk about each of them. Okay so we'll talk about this pink one first. So I also didn't read the names of these yet so I may not be able to pronounce everything but that's okay. Oh yeah okay there's some I don't know how to pronounce but that's okay. Um, so this one is Bougainvillea and Aperol Spritz. Very cute. Um, yeah, just super bright and summery. I really like this pink. Like, 
it's pink purple and bright <laughs> so anyway i'm i'm just yeah i really i'm just enjoying like these sock sets i enjoy looking at even like the spring box i just enjoy looking at them i have no idea what i'm going to knit with them yet but it's just they're just very enjoyable to look at all together because theme wise they all look so good together okay this one is lemonade stand plus a word I don't know how to say if the camera can focus maybe you can read it and if not it I guess it won't focus that's okay it is I will spell it so that at least you'll get to know what the colorway is um z-a-k-y-n-t-h-o-s so that's that I will say I'm usually not like a yellow color type of person, but this one is very cute. And I think maybe part of it is because it's called Lemonade Stand that it just like, I'm like, it fits so well that I like it. You know what I mean? And then this blue is also just like really cute and just all, overall feels very like cool and like nice and like, like you're at a pool drinking lemonade or something is kind of how I how I see these colors. Okay, this next one, Granita and Limoncello. This one's also very fun. Again, also really bright. And I feel like I would have, like, maybe a couple months ago would have been like, I don't like bright colors for my yarn. But ever since, like, seeing so many people um, like yarn dyers have bright colors and also people knitting with bright colors like I've really gotten into it and been in the mood for something really bright and summery and happy and honestly when I after I knit up my uh, my sunset camisole in the Pike Place colorway by Explorer Knits like that red color it was very like outside of what I would have knit with color like color wise but it looks so good and so after that I was like I want to try all of these different colors and more brighter colors that I wouldn't have thought to get or wear in the first place so I've been very very excited about these bright colors so anyway so this is also very cute and together very cute they're all very cute so I will oh, just keep saying that because it's true Okay, and this one is Pool Club and Mal Malibu Dream House. I feel like everyone's been getting into this like Barbie pink, neon pink color. And it is very cute. So yeah, so these are the sock sets from this season's box. I'll hold them up again. Super bright and happy, very on theme. And oh, again, just dropping all the yarn everywhere. It's okay. But yeah, so that is the summer box from Paisley Knits. Love Paisley Knits. Love Coley. And okay. Okay, now next, more from Paisley Knits. I got my order from the Gods of Olympus pre-order yarn. And I, so last year I did do the club. And so I got one skein of each color last year. But I missed the first like three months and so I wanted to get some on a couple different bases from the months, the early months that I missed of the, the yarn club. So, oh and I also got more of a color that I really like. Okay, so I will start with the one that I already got the color of but I really liked it so I wanted to get it again on a different base. So this is Aphrodite, and this time I got it on the Silky Sock Base. So again, this is the first time I am using this yarn base from Paisley Knits. This is 50% superwash merino wool, 50% silk. There's 438 yards for 100 grams. And I, one, love how this colorway looks on this base, and two, I love how it feels. It's so nice. So this is going to turn into some kind of tank top. I have the pattern in mind. I think it's a Kadri pattern. I'm not 
uh, positive right now, but I do have a pattern in mind. I don't know the name, but when I do cast this on, I will share that pattern with all of you. I think this will be really, 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 really cute and a perfect base for summer, a summer top. And then, okay, and then the colorways that I did not get from the club because I didn't join it until after the first three months were already out. And then I was like, they're so good, I need to join the club. So I don't know in what order these, you know, were part of the club last year, but I will start talking about this one. So this is Zeus on the Salty Sock Base, which is a, this is 80% extra fine merino wool and 20% recycled nylon, 437 yards for 100 grams. And so it looks really, really like, color-wise looks really soft and also like touch-wise, it feels, it feels different than like a normal, like superwash. So I guess, I mean, it's extra fine merino wool. So yeah, this is interesting. Actually, is this non-superwash? This might be non-superwash. Actually, I am going to look, I think I can look that up really quickly on here. So I'm gonna look that up really quickly. So sorry for all of the looking up stuff in the middle of this video. So this is Salty Sock. Yeah, it's non-superwash. Okay, so that makes sense. Very excited to try this out. And I think the color blends really nicely on this base. So this was Zeus. And then I also got Dionysus on the Krabby Sock base. 100% superwash merino wool, 437 yards for 100 grams. And yeah, a really nice dark purple with a little bit of like green in there as well. So that's very pretty. And then I got, this is the first time I am feeling this base. This is the base I'm really, really excited to try out. So this is the colorway Aries on the cloud base. This is 70% baby alpaca, 7% merino wool, and 23% nylon, 284 yards for 100 grams. And this is the bulky weight yarn that uh, Paisley Knits has. And it is so soft and fluffy. I'm really, really, really excited to knit with this. And I, th I bought this with the intent on making a beanie. And so don't know when I will cast this on, but I really want to make a beanie and see how this feels on it. And if I like it, I feel like I will. It feels so soft. I'm going to try and... If I have extras after I make the beanie also, I might do some gauge swatches so that I can kind of figure out what other things I can make with this base because it is a bulky weight, but it's, and it also says on the Paisley Knits website, now that I have it up, it is a blown yarn. So it's really, really lightweight. So I think even though it's bulky, you could maybe even use it for something that's like an Aran weight or maybe even worsted weight, like I'm not totally sure. So I want to maybe do a gauge swatch or just knit with it in general to see how it feels. Because if it, like, I mean, a full a entire sweater in this would be so soft and fluffy. It'd be really great. Oh my gosh, what if it works for a big rib sweater? That would be cute too. Okay. And then, yeah, so that is... Those are the four colorways I got from the, the uh, Gods of Olympus pre-order. Then let me pull up my notes again because, okay, so there's just, we're almost there. There's a couple more things. So I also got in my order from Woolberry from the Rewind. This was for the colorway Camp Woolberry. And I did get this colorway in the past, but I never got it on Surrey. So this time I got two skeins of Surrey because I think it also looks really cute on Surrey. And I'm very, very interested about this base because I do wish that she maybe called it something different because she is replacing her Surrey base with this Surrey base. So this one has more yardage 
than the previous Surrey base that she has. They're both called Berry Surrey. So possibly in like my Ravelry notes, I'll just have to, I don't know, like when you pick the yarn, there's like yardage associated with the yarn. And so I don't know if people will call this something different or they're just gonna update the, the base, like how much yardage there is, but Anyway, so this new Surrey base by Woolberry is, oh, I don't know if the ratio of alpaca and silk is the same, but this one is 65% Surrey alpaca, 35% silk. The biggest difference though is the yardage. So it is still 50 grams for a skein, but it's 437 yards for each skein. Previously, the Surrey base was like 300 something. I think most people, or the, the Surrey, do I have a Surrey? Okay, I do. Okay, I think most people's Surrey base is maybe like the Explore in it Surrey, which is 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 26% silk. I don't know, anyway, I don't really look at the percentages for the Surrey, so I don't know if the Explorinus one is also different than others, but the yardage, usually the ones that I have bought are 328 yards for 50 grams, but this new Woolberry one is 437 yards, so you get more yardage per skein. So that'll be really interesting. I wonder if it's going to feel like, is it going to feel lighter and thinner, like less fluffy, and that's how it got more yardage. Not sure yet, so I would like to make something with this soon-ish so that if I buy Surrey from Woolberry again, I will have a better idea on how it works up compared to like the old Surrey base. That was a lot of words, hopefully you got something out of that. But yeah, so this is from the Woolberry Rewind, so I got two skeins of that. And then Okay, I did, I did make a little purchase from La Mercerie because I wanted more knitting needles and then I also bought a sock set. Uh, so I will just really quickly show you what I got. So, ooh, I actually got four needles, but I opened one up already, but I got more Chiagu needles and I got them in a couple more in sizes that I just feel like I always want. And then I'm like, I wanna cast on a new project, but all of that needle size is on a project. So I got US three and US two again. Oh, but this time I did get it in a 24 inch because for some, if there's negative ease for a top, I think my other, needles might be like 32 inches is that what the 30 something inches and because my my bus like circumference is 30 inches if it's usually the 32 inch circular needles are usually fine if for making most tops like sweaters and stuff because there's going to be positive ease but if it's negative ease or even just like zero ease the top doesn't really fit on those circular needles. And so I got, these are all 24 inch needles. I also got them in sizes that I don't have yet. So this one is US two and a half. And I also got US zero. So these were bought mostly for like summer tops I want to make. So we will probably see them getting used pretty soon. And then, sock set I got was this one. I think this was like, there were some leftovers from like the year of socks or something from La Mercery. And I usually see them and I'm like, mm, it's okay. Like I don't need to buy the extras, but I saw this one and I really just couldn't resist it. So I've never gotten uh, Itobito yarn before, hand dyed in Japan. And it's very, like this color is so, so cute and the mini, very, very cute. So I just really felt like I had to get it. Um, yeah, it's called Summer Sweetheart. It's so cute. This one's very cute, very happy with it. 
Okay. Woo. So that was a lot. If you've made it all the way through the video, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that you had fun watching and looking at all the things that I bought and also all of the projects that I've worked on in the past two weeks because it's a lot. I mean, it's a little overwhelming, but overall, like, I am so happy. Knitting brings me so much joy and I just, the friendships I've made through knitting are just like, I never would have thought that this would have happened. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot about, uh, speaking of friendships through knitting, I talked about meeting Coley at the the summer the Explore Knit Summer Market, but I also met Krizel, uh, who I have been talking to on Instagram also, and I didn't even know she was going to be there until I think the day of. I think she posted something. I forget, but I was like, what? She's going to be there? And so I also met her for the first time in person in like real life and that was also crazy um so anyway like it was really cool to meet people that i'm like i feel like i'm friends with on instagram and see them in person and i just it is so cool the community that this knitting community like has and i am now even more excited about flock I just like it is I didn't realize how soon it's coming up I kept thinking in my head like oh it's like months from now at least a month like two months from now but it is less than a month from now and so it's very very exciting I feel like I've been seeing a lot more people saying that they're going and so I'm like really excited to meet one like all of like the vendors who are going to be there like there's so much people that I want to meet in real life who are going to be vendors at this event. That's so fun. Uh, just hanging out with my yarn friends, knitting friends. And I'm just even more excited now for Flock. So, so excited that I actually, previously I bought the weekend ticket, so Saturday and Sunday, but I've also now bought the Friday ticket to go because I was like, am I crazy for not buying the Friday ticket? Because all the yarn's going to be, all the crazy people who want the yarn are going to go on Friday. So um, I also bought a Friday ticket, so I will also be going on Friday. Uh, so that's even more exciting. I didn't, I also didn't realize there's going to be food trucks at this event, but it makes sense that there will be. And so excited for that as well. Overall, just so looking forward to Flock. I think it's going to be really fun. Can't wait to hopefully re-see some people and meet more friends on that I just like follow on Instagram and see and hopefully we can be friends in, in actual real life now. So okay, I will stop talking now because this was a lot of talking. I think I need to drink water because this was a lot. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, your day this week and I will be I will be posting again next week. That is the plan. So we'll see what kind of updates I have. Oh, real quick. I know like every time I'm like ready to sign off, I just talk more and more and more. That's just, I think just who I am. So I hope that that's not too annoying, but I am now doing more yarn dyeing exper experiments. So I've dyed some yarn this morning. I'm really, really, really excited about the results for these and I will talk more about them in next week's video because they are still kind of like, they're still soaking and drying. So I can't show them today in today's video, but next week's video, I will be talking about them. Very exciting. And okay, I think now that, that is all the updates. I hope you're all having a great day. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. And let me know in the comments down below again what you have been working on while watching this video or what you've been you know loving to work on as of lately and I yeah I'm just looking at all of my yarn what am I going to cast on next I guess we'll find out in next week's video but with that I hope you continue to have hopefully a great day <laughs> and make sure to stretch make sure to take some breaks from your knitting so that you can stay healthy with your hands so that you can keep knitting 
for a very long time. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!